Good morning, Real Time Faith Podcast is here. And today I want to talk about faith, right? And we're going to start in Mark 1 regarding Jesus' ministry in Galilee, okay? Look, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And so the four fishermen followed Jesus. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When they had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Okay, so the emphasis behind this particular passage, right, is that the time has come, and that time is now. That if you're listening to this podcast and you're interested in following Jesus, first of all, Jesus is speaking to you when he says the time has come. Right there, it's in God's words. Meditate on that. Sit down and just let Jesus speak that into you. Right? He says, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. So you have two things here. The kingdom of God is is near, is one of them, meaning Jesus is, is here. Right? The capability to doing what you think or believe to be true in God. Right? When, you, when God's putting something on your mind, whether it be something to do in good faith, he's saying the, the kingdom of God is near. It's like, go ahead, know that the kingdom is always near. So then what's the second part? Well, we got to repent and we got to believe the good news. So basically we got to change our ways. If we know that the the way, right? If we know that the kingdom is near, then we've got to repent and change our ways. We've got to really look and analyze our days and say, okay, what needs to change? What needs to change? What needs to change? Is there unchecked sin in my life that needs to change? And if that's the case, then we work on that. And we know with good faith, that if we believe the good news, we repent from that sin, right? Then we can get closer to Jesus, just like that. Okay, so then it says, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother, right? Now, they, these guys are just fishing. Now, I want you guys to picture this. You guys are just at your jobs. I don't know what you're doing, but if you're listening to this podcast, whatever job you're doing, picture Jesus coming up to you and saying, come, follow me. Would you drop what you're doing to go follow Jesus? We've been told that, you know, we're to be a light at our jobs. And this is true. We'll be told that, you know, we are the light. That we should try to change um, people by just being the light. Not going to try to Bible thump them, but just try to be the exact representation of Jesus that we possibly can be. Which is usually loving, gentle, kind, um, and just forgiving. Just different. If you could just be different, people see that and they can see something in you. Then you have that opening, that window to say, hey, if you're thinking that there's something different in me or you're sensing something different in me, it's because there is. Like I'm a child of the light. So, you know, don't be afraid and know that God has changed me from the inside out. He's changed my heart. He's helped me grow. So in this particular case, these guys are just fishing right? At a lake. And Jesus says, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Now we got to say, why does he say this? Think about it in a spiritual sense, right? These guys are just trying to catch fish. That's their job. They're just trying to catch fish. They're fisher men. And then you have this idea that Jesus goes, but I'll make you fishers of men, right? In other words, what Jesus wants to do in your life spiritually is change your heart so that you have that want, that need, and that desire to go Help others see their potential, the the light in them, and what Jesus is calling them to be. Help call them to to look for Jesus. Be the signpost so that when they see you, they see a signpost that is pointing towards Christ. Right? And he's saying, come, follow me. Because if we're reading this in real time, then this is us following Christ. Think about that. Jesus is like, come, follow me. So I'm following Christ. So as I'm following Christ and somebody else comes into my day, then wouldn't any time that they're following me or they run into me, they would know that I'm following Christ. That's the logic there. 
And if we got to ask ourselves that each morning, it's like, is that how we see ourselves each morning? Like I'm going somewhere, right? I'm walking somewhere. Somebody stumbles into me. Hey, Josh, how's it going? I go, hey, hey, how's it going? They're like, hey, what are you doing? Where are you on your way to? I'm like, well, I'm going this way. Like, Why are you going this way? And then you explain. I'm following Jesus. Or, I mean, yeah, man, Jesus has changed my life. You see me doing what I'm doing. You see my attitude. You see where I'm going. And that's where God is taking me. And so they go, oh, okay. And so what I'm becoming is a fisher of men. And it's amazing because we don't have to go out and, and do the fishing, right? It's Jesus. Notice how Jesus came to Simon and Andrew. They didn't go to Jesus. Jesus came to them as Jesus walked beside this, the Sea of Galilee, right? So Jesus comes to you, right? It's like whenever you're in need of changing somebody around you or needing to reach the gospel of somebody around you or needing to produce more fruit for somebody around you, God is going to come to you and speak to you. Now, I believe this to be true in prayer. I believe that when we are fully in our prayer, we're engaged in our prayer, then that's when Jesus can talk to us the most. And we should have our Bibles right next to us and we should be ready to hear any verse that the Lord puts on our minds. Because if you hear any verse in your mind while you're praying, that is the Holy Spirit talking to you. Make no mistake. There is emphasis there. There is power there. If the Holy Spirit is talking to you then, you, then you read into that. You listen to that prayer. And then you read those words. And that's exactly what the Lord is teaching you in that very moment. That's more precious than any teaching on planet Earth in that very moment. That's a powerful thing right there. Okay. Now, we switch over to Mark 2. We see Jesus eats with sinners at Matthew's house. So maybe in your life right now, you have a troubled time understanding Jesus because there's so much sin around you. Maybe you're involved in sin. Maybe you think that even as the sinner, you can't be close to God. Mm, well, that's opposite, right? Because look at this right now, Mark 2. Here's your, here's your encouragement for the day. Jesus eats with the sinners. He eats with them. He's with you. Even if you're the sinner, he eats with you. And if you're not the sinner and you're doing a really good job, which obviously we all fall short of the glory of God, so we are all sinners, but let's say you're on a really high spiritual streak. Well, then you're just still with Jesus, eating with other people who are sinners. There's really no way out of it. And so, yes, it's a messed up world. And yes, all kinds of things can happen. But if we take heart in knowing as we're spreading the gospel and knowing that in this very moment that you either are Either Jesus is eating with you because he's just right there sustaining you. He's like, I know, he's like, I know what's going on. He's like, we can get over this sin together. He's like, take your time, finish up your meal. He's like, let's talk this over. Let's try to figure out a game plan. If you're willing to do that and you're not running away from God, know that God has so much love for you in that moment. He's just saying, look, finish up your meal and we'll try to figure out a game plan. I know something happened. I know you stumbled. I know you might have slept with somebody. I know you might have sinned in this way. I may know, You may watch pornography. You may have done all these kinds of different things, but know this much. I'm still right here. We can still bounce back from this. Let's just try to get better, okay? And you always have that capability to get better. Don't ever let anybody tell you you don't have that capability to get better. You always do. So then, that being said, Jesus again with the sinners, as he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me. Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. This is amazing, right? Because again, here he is, and we're asking, where is Jesus? Well, it, it follows to say that at, 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 let's see, 2.17, Mark, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. See, I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So God has not called the righteous. He's called sinners. So he's around the sinful circle. You ask him, where's Jesus? Well, he's around sinners. You ask him, where's Jesus? He's around the people who are, who are broken in sin, who are dealing with sin. That's where Jesus is. It's that simple, guys. We've asked, where are you, Lord? Where are you, Jesus? Where are you, God of the universe? All you got to do, ladies and gentlemen, for the most practical application of your faith is get closer to the circles that are of brokenness, that are struggling with addictions, right? And you're going to realize that Jesus is the closest to those circles. Some people are like, where is Jesus in their terms of power? and their rise to fame, and their rise in status. Well, Jesus is not in that rise. He's lower. He's much lower. He's with the lowly in that moment, right? There's an instance where people say, well, where is God in scripture? And even Jesus goes, well, didn't you know I had to be with my father, right? Did you know I had to be in the church? Did you know I have to be around the church? That's where I am. That's where, if you want me, that's where I am. Just come and find me. Just come to the church. Talk to me, right? Talk to me through the people. It's his spirit that dwells inside the people. We're not perfect. Don't look at the person to be 
what the representation of Jesus is. That's never the way to, to be encouraged in this life, in my opinion. Because that just kind of, we see people and then we see, we hear what they say behind our backs or we, or we say something and it's like, we got to overlook that. What we got to do is look at the fruits of the producing. So maybe somebody is awfully wicked in one season, but awesome in the next season and awfully wicked again in the next season and an awesome in the next season, okay? We're seeing God's work still work through them because that's how God can work through people. So make no mistake that if you feel like you've made all the mistakes in the entire world and God is this huge condemning God, he's not. He loves you with all his heart. And it's only us who manage to tell ourselves excuses for why we'll stay away from God today, why we won't tithe to the church today, why we won't go and encourage somebody in their faith today. That's just us. That's just us and our own reasoning. So I just pray this to you guys as you listen, as this message of encouragement, that no matter who you are and what you're doing today, just know that you can walk in that light. You can be with Jesus. You can go to Jesus by just going to the places where you know Jesus is. I pray this in Jesus' name, that everybody's filled with the Spirit and that you have blessings, that those who have ears are listening and those who have eyes are seeing and perceiving. God bless you guys.